Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of March 12th through 18th. Today is Saturday, March 18th. So just before we start, the neighborhood dogs have been barking non-stop. So the entire time I've been filming, they've been barking. And I don't know what they're barking at, but they won't stop. <laughs> so in case you hear some dogs barking, it's somewhere in my neighborhood. I don't think it's my neighbor's dogs, um, but it's somewhere close by. So if you hear that, I apologize, but there's nothing I can do about it. But anyway, um, this week has been an okay week. I did get through quite a bit of reading. Um, and so let me share that with you. I finished four things this week and then I am working on one. And then I have a little bit of a Blanket of Reads update and then I'll let you know how the rest of my week went at the end. So the first thing that I finished this week was 6-4 by Hideo Yokoyama. So this says it's the Japanese crime phenomenon, now a UK bestseller. Um, this story on the cover says 6-4, the nightmare no parent could endure, the case no detective could solve, the twist no reader could predict. For five days in January 1989, the parents of a seven-year-old Tokyo schoolgirl sat and listened to the demands of their daughter's kidnapper. They would never learn his identity. They would never see their daughter again. For the 14 years that followed, the Japanese public listened to the police's apologies. They would never forget the botched investigation that became known as 6-4. They would never forgive the authorities their failure. For one week in late 2002, the press officer assigned to the police department in question confronted an anomaly in the case. He could never imagine what he would uncover. He would never have looked if he'd known what he would find. So from that description alone, it made it sound like this was going to be a super intriguing mystery. Unfortunately, that is not really what this story is about. So in this book, which is over 600 pages long, we follow a man named Mikami. And at the very beginning of the book, you are dropped into his life. You realize that there is something big going on in his life. I don't want to tell you what that thing is. I don't really think it has any like importance in the story. But he is going through something. Him and his wife are going through something. And you kind of follow him in his day-to-day -day life as the press officer, which basically means he's the go-between between, between the press and the police department. So Mikami used to be a police officer, but now he works in these this like public relations type of a job where he is having to mediate between the press's demands for information and what the police is willing to give for press releases. And it's not a really, like, happy job. There is a lot of stress that goes along with the job. Obviously, he gets a lot of pull from the press to release more information than the police department is willing to give. And he has to go to the police officers and say, hey, uh, can you give us a little bit more? The press is demanding. And, you know, the press has demands and they're not willing to give up certain things. But the police officers also don't want to give up certain things. So it's a really, really stressful job for him. And something is going on where there's a particular case where the press wants more information than the police are willing to give. And they are wanting to boycott now. They they don't want to, like, work with the police anymore. They want uh, to put in a formal, like, complaint. And, you know, Mikami's kind of in the position where he's being pressured to talk the press down. And in the midst of all of this, now, like, a high-ranking police commissioner, I believe, is coming to visit and the reason for his visit has something to do with 6-4. And so just everything is on his plate, Mikami's. 
He's got this personal thing going on in his life. He's got this issue with this one particular case where the police doesn't want to give information and the press wants more and they want to file a complaint. He's got this impending visit from this high-ranking official and he's being pressured by the police to make sure that the press behave themselves because they don't want a public outcry. You know, everybody realizes what had happened before with 6-4 and now with this person coming for this specific visit, he, you know, needs to smooth things over and make sure everything is nicely tied with a bow, if you know what I mean. And he's also asked to go and visit the father of the victim in the 6-4 case and see if he'd be amenable to a visit from this high-ranking official. And so it's kind of like everything is in a whirlwind for this guy. And for the most part, this book is family drama, po office politics, and a little bit of investigating into this 6-4 case. Uh, I thought that this case, this book was going to be more about what Mikami uncovers and, you know, be suspenseful in hopes that by the end of this, the case gets solved. But what I got was family drama, lots of family drama, uh, lots of office politics like a day in the life of a press officer type of thing with just a little bit of investigating. And that's not the type of book that I enjoy. I enjoy a really gripping mystery, a mystery that keeps me on the edge of my seat. You know, something that grabs my interest and holds me there until the end. And that is not what this book gave me. Like I said, a majority of this was family drama and office politics. So if you like that kind of thing and you don't enjoy really suspenseful edge of your seat type mysteries, this might be something that you might consider. Unfortunately, this fell flat for me. The end of this book also left me feeling unsatisfied, which is, again, something that I don't enjoy when reading a, a book in general. I don't like leaving books with unsatisfied feelings. I feel like I still have a lot of questions on this, and I feel like this story was unsatisfactorily wrapped up. I don't feel like this like story was. I feel like any day now we could see another one of these books where we're following Mikami doing his day-to-day -day thing, um, and and that's pretty much what this felt like. It felt like us going to work every day with Mikami. And that's it. So, yeah, I was feeling really unsatisfied with this ending, with this book in general. And so I only gave this a three star. I did listen to quite a bit of this from the audiobook, which I have a lot of issues with. Um, you know, pronunciations weren't great. The narrator does have a British accent, and that took me out of this story. I know I've talked to you guys about the fact that I've been revisiting the Harry Potter books this year. I've been listening to those on audiobook. And a lot of the character voices that the narrator did sounded like characters that I'd been listening to in the Harry Potter audiobooks. So even more so that pulled me out of this. I couldn't like believe when I was listening to the audiobook that I was in Japan that I was dealing with Japanese characters because they all sounded white and British. And that's not helpful. It's not helpful. It's not appropriate. At least in my point of view, they should have had someone who was Japanese narrate this. And I don't know why they didn't. Yeah, just really unsatisfied with this whole experience. For a 600-page novel, the most intriguing thing about this was the little question-and-answer section in the back. Um, there is a little Q&A 
with the author and the translator of the novel asking him questions. So there's questions like what the author used to do before he wrote uh, this book. Apparently he was a reporter on a regional newspaper, so there's some personal ties to his character. Um, he asks about what made him want to start writing crime fiction. He asks about the length of time it took the author to write 6-4 and why it was called 6-4. And all of that was so much more interesting to me than what was presented in this book. The, I would say the last like 100 pages or so was probably the most interesting of this book until the last like 20 pages or so. Um, which is where I get the unsatisfactory feeling, <laughs> the unsatisfied feeling. Uh, but that's where things really pick up. Like the last hundred pages or so, there's something that happens in the last hundred pages that gave me finally what I wanted from the story. Like edge of the seat suspense. What's going on? Like all of that was great, but Family drama, I'm not into. You know I don't read a lot of that. Uh, office politics, not really into that either. I have my own, like, in real life office politics that I don't like dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. Why would I want to read about somebody else going through that? And, yeah, the investigation was just okay. It seemed so relaxed. Like, there was no sense of urgency because this was a closed, cold case. There was no urgency, and I get that, but at the same time, you know, once he starts finding out things, you'd think there'd be a little bit more suspense, a little bit more grip to the story, and there just wasn't. So, unfortunately, this was just a three-star for me. Um, after hearing me talk about it, my daughter's kind of, like, not interested in reading this anymore, I think she might still want to give it a go. I haven't talked to my mom yet about whether or not she'd want to read this, but I will definitely not be rereading this story. I would consider re-listening to this story if they got someone who was Japanese to narrate this. I think that might make a difference on how I feel about this book. It might have also made a difference if I had just read this without listening to it. Because when I was reading from the novel with my eyes, it definitely moved a lot faster. And I was able to like not feel like I was being pulled out of the story with the British accents as well. Um, but the British accents just, they made me like see these characters in my mind as white British men. And that's not what this story is about. This story follows people in Japan, Japanese men. And that's not what they sounded like to me. So, yeah, it's unfortunate because I've had this book on my radar for a while. I've had this book in my personal library for a couple years, I think. I was so intrigued to read it. And, you know, that feeling when you get a book that you were so intrigued to read... And it just falls flat. Um, so the only thing I can give this is a three star. It was okay. And that's all. So, yeah. So after I finished that one, I decided to go ahead and pick up a manga. Because I felt like I needed a pick-me-up. And usually manga reads really quickly for me. And I knew that this particular manga um, was going to be that. Because I had already read the first volume and really enjoyed it and so I decided to read Museum. This is a three volume manga series by Ryosuke Tomoe. It is published by Kodansha. I only have digital copies because I believe that it is only available digitally. I received mine as part of a humble bundle that I purchased when Kodansha was doing a bundle and I do not have like the back cover to tell me what the age rating on this is. 
based on what I read, I would say the age rating is between older teen and mature. Um, but this is a story that follows the investigation of a serial killer. So we're following one character in particular. He is a member of the police um, detectives, and he is investigating uh, this serial killer, these murders, murder victims of the serial killer. The investigation does become personal for him at one point. So, yeah. I mean, I think if you like stories or TV shows like Criminal Minds, you would enjoy something like this. Even though we're not uh, following the BAU investigating, we are following a police detective who is uh, tasked with looking into these murder victims and... Um, investigating uh, the serial killer, like putting together a profile and things like that. Um, this story is not going to be for everyone. Being that it is in a graphic novel format, um, it does get very gory. You do see a depiction of a dismembered corpse. There is a scene where you see the serial killer dismembering uh, that person. I believe that is the only one that you actually see him killing his victim throughout the entire story. But there are several victims uh, that are being investigated throughout these three volumes. And so I was very intrigued with the first volume. I read the first volume um, in October of 2022 as part of the Camp Crystal Lake readathon, and I was super intrigued because we got a cliffhanger ending at the very end of volume one. And so I never had the time to pick up the rest of the, the other two volumes, the rest of the series, and so I decided that I was going to reread the first volume and just read through the entire series for March Mystery Madness, and that's what I did. And I quite enjoyed this story. It was very interesting it gave me that edge of the seat, you know, suspenseful feeling, especially after the first volume. It was very logical in the way that everything was laid out from the uh, motive to him figuring out who the suspect was and investigating and all of that. I really enjoyed it. The art style, not my favorite. Um... But it definitely fits with the type of story that this is. And like I said, it's gruesome. Um, there's a bit of nudity. It's very, very bloody. The very first victim that you see, very bloody, very gory. Um, and then the second victim that you see is the one that you see him actively dismembering. So just know that going in. But... The other victims, you don't really see that. And I would say the first two victims are probably the hardest to look at if you're somebody who's squeamish. Um, the rest of the victims aren't bloody or gory. Um, so just so that you know that. But I really enjoyed this story. It was very, very interesting. Just like watching a case on Criminal Minds. Um, which is a TV show that I quite enjoy. And yeah, so like I said, if you are a fan of TV shows like Criminal Minds or even like CSI or anything like that, um, definitely check out this series. Like I said, I believe it's only available digitally, but it's very, very good. I really, really enjoyed it. Also in volumes two and three of this series, you get two shorts. Um, they're outside of this story though so there is one at the end of volume two that follows an assassin and at the end of volume three it's a short story about three friends who decide that they are going to take a day trip or after school trip and walk around hanging mountain which the lore of hanging mountain is very much the same as suicide forest or Okigahara. Um, and so, yeah, very, very interesting stories 
as well as the museum, and I quite enjoyed everything that I had read in these three volumes. So I definitely recommend it. I give all three volumes four stars and highly recommend if you are interested in things like Criminal Minds. And so, yeah, I just finished that last volume very early this morning, uh, right before bed. And so I have ended this week on a high note as far as my reading goes. I do still have quite a bit on my plate for the rest of the month, though I have almost two full weeks. So I'm looking forward to getting in a few more reads. Um, today was my filming day as always. And so I uh, ended up filming my TBR for April a little bit early just because I didn't want to have to film four videos next week. And so I thought I'd space it out a little bit. Um, this week was okay. Um, it was a little bit hard emotionally, but this week always is hard for me emotionally. Um, because it is the anniversary of my grandfather's passing. But uh, I would say that it was okay. It was okay for me mentally, emotionally. Um, work was a little bit less stressful this week for me as well. And so, yeah, my coworker did decide to start working five days a week instead of four. So this past week was her first week doing that. I asked her if they were making it worthwhile for her. And she said, yeah, um, that they're going to pay her for the hours that she worked. And we're both salaried, so I don't know what that means. But I guess they're going to figure out how much we get paid per hour and then add that on for her. But for me, that's not worth it. Like, it's not worth it. I'm not going to work for more money. I should be paid a bit more for the things that I have done for my company for the last 20 years. That's that's what I think. Um, but yeah, she has decided to start going back to work for five days. And that's her choice. I hope it makes her happy. I hope that she gets paid what she is worth um, for that. But I do also hear that they are working on getting us some raises. So gonna keep pressuring them for that and yeah my dad uh was in japan uh with his wife over the last week or so so he's been texting me a lot um i think that i heard from him more over the last week than i have heard from him since i was four years old he kept texting me pictures of food that he was having and all of the places that he was going and things like that and it was nice to see because I've never been uh, to Japan and it's definitely somewhere my daughter would like to go so I think it's it's somewhere in the cards I just don't know when I told her that when uh, we do decide to go that she would have to be in charge of that trip because I don't speak Japanese uh, but she does <laughs> so yeah it was interesting. Um, it was a little strange there, being that I was hearing from my dad pretty regularly throughout his trip. Normally when he goes on trips, he doesn't ever like text me and let me know. But for whatever reason this time around, I guess he was just so happy to be in Japan. He had never been, so this was his first time. It wasn't his wife's though. And he was just like a little kid in a candy store, man. Lots and lots of good looking food. Lots of food. Definitely had that ramen shot. <laughs> he had some like donuts and um, mochi and things like that. It looked like he was having a great time. So I'm glad he's now back home. And so, yeah. And before I let you go, I do have a blanket of reads update. So I did put in a little bit on my blanket. I'm at the end of my February reads, I believe, now. So I did um, start a new column. So when I talked to you last, I was here. So this was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And so, see, this is what I'm doing with the multicolored one. So I'm just filling in. If I had only had 
a two-star read, this would have fit right there. But I didn't. So to make the strip equal, I just filled it in with the multicolor. So in light of that, I started a new row down here at the bottom. And so you can see that this is my third strip. So on the camera, this is coming out kind of orange, this color right here. But it is red. So I've got yellow, orange, and red on the bottom, which is kind of odd, but oh well. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is red. Uh, I believe this was Blood Fever, um, the second book in the Fever series. And then I've got some hot pink going on down here for Romantic Killer, which is the first of the monochrome manga club reads. And for the next few, they're all going to be the same length as Blood Fever because they're all four stars. So all of the manga club until we get to a Demon Slayer will be this long. So yeah, not too bad. I'm not as behind as I thought I was going to be. Um, I think if I do one of these blankets next year though, I'm just going to do the novels that I write, that I read and not include all of the manga because I foresee an issue happening. Like if I want to do a 30 and 30 manga challenge or 30 volumes in 30 days, uh, that's really going to put me behind. I already anticipated being behind for my advent calendar project, but like the manga pride readathons coming up and I tend to read a lot of pride manga during that month. There's a 30 and 30 challenge coming up, I think in April, but I don't think I'm going to uh, try for that one because my April's looking to be pretty busy. And yeah, so I think I'd want to just do the novels that I read instead of include everything that I read. So that's something to think about for next year, but that's pretty much all I've got for you for this week so let me know down in the comments below what you've read over the last week have you had some great reads or some dud reads i'd love to know i always find that stuff interesting because <laughs> i feel like i can commiserate if you've had a bad read especially with this week and how i've kind of felt so meh about six four which is so disappointing i was so disappointed when i finished that book um but bigger and brighter things on the horizon. I'm going to end this month strong. This weekend is when I start my monochrome manga club reads because our meeting is on Thursday the 23rd and so manga usually is really fast and interesting reads for me so I'm really looking forward to getting to those plus this mystery manga and so that's always a fun time for me as well. And so yeah let me know if you've had a really great read or really dud read or you've had a meh read what are you reading this week? I'd love to know. If nothing else, you'd just like to let me know that you were here. If you could leave me a frog emoji. Is there a frog? The cover of Museum, the serial killer wears a frog mask. Um, so if there's a frog emoji, could you leave that down? If nothing else, um, you can leave any type of animal emoji. Your favorite animal emoji will do. And that will do it for me today. So I hope you're all doing great. I hope you're all safe and healthy. And until next time, take care and smile always. Bye.